Hey there. In this video, I just want to talk about LinkedIn. A lot of my students have asked me how to get the attention of recruiters. Um, what are some of the do's and don'ts regarding LinkedIn? So that's what this video is dedicated to. So let's get started. First things first, and this is obvious. Make sure you have a picture in which you're smiling and it looks like a positive picture. You want to give a positive vibe on your profile. If you look upset uh, or you look too serious, that just sort of, you know, it doesn't give a good positive vibe. So make sure you're smiling. I found a picture in which you know, I was looking for the biggest smile I can find. And this is that picture. OK, so that's why I decided to put it as my public profile. Uh, another thing is uh, the picture should be uh, somewhat professional, but, but it could also be casual. Just make sure that you're not at a wedding or some, uh, you know, function, which is, you can easily tell, okay, this person is at a wedding. That just doesn't look as professional as something that's casual or you're outdoors or something like that, okay? And make sure your face is visible clearly in the picture. One time I saw this picture of a person standing next to an oak tree, and he must have been a good 50 to 100 feet away. And you could see the entire tree, but you could barely see the person. He looked like a little ant standing next to that tree and... Uh, that's not an effective profile picture, okay? So stay away from things like that. Sorry, I rambled on a bit about the profile picture, but this is an important piece that I see missing in a lot of profiles. So make sure you correct this. Moving on, uh, right underneath there is your name followed by the headline, okay? This is something that you can control as, you know, you can write whatever you want here. The headline is typically the area where the job title is entered. But if you're currently looking for a job as a developer, you should never... You should never put the words looking for opportunities in your headline, okay? I can't tell you how many profiles I came across that contain this mistake. First of all, the phrase looking for opportunities just sounds extremely passive and recruiters won't even look at your profile if, if that's in your headline. So make sure you stay away from that. Secondly, understand this. Just because you're not employed in the job area that you'd like to be, doesn't mean that you're not qualified for that job. For example, I have the title software engineer here. Uh, right now, I'm not working at a company as a software engineer, right? I write my own software and I'm developing courses, but I that's my profession. I'm a software engineer. So whether you're working at a company as a software engineer or not, if you're coding every day and uh, you're expanding your skill sets, you are still a software engineer if, you know, if that's your, your field. Another thing you can add is maybe something that you're proud of. Um, I'm a Udemy instructor. I create courses and I have over 70,000 students. So I decided to add that as my headline. Okay. The next couple of things are sort of out of your control, uh, the company that you work for and then the university and, and that sort of thing. So this is sort of auto populated. But after that, this is a, is a critical area. Here you can provide a summary of about you know about yourself or about some of the things that you know and i could have given a summary about myself but i feel like that's too long for most people to read so i like to break things down into sort of an outline and this is a nice way of presenting exactly what i am an expert on all right i have this funny little statement uh uh, programming is an art. I'm an artist, hence I can program. Haha, <laughs> not very funny, but it's something followed by this list of technologies that I can I consider myself uh, pretty much an expert on. If you are studying a particular technology and you'd like to get a job in that um, technology or profession, make sure you list those things out right in the beginning so that recruiters get to see that as one of the first things in your profile. After that, um, it comes to the experience. So here, you know, there might be students out there that are still in college that do not have experience on their profile. And for them, I recommend go to Upwork.com, which is right here. I've opened it, this up in another tab. This is a website for freelancers, right? And you can sign up as a freelancer and look up the jobs and actually acquire consulting gigs where you get paid to do things like software development. You can do web development, you could do SEO, you can work on Excel. People have all kinds of projects here and you can complete those tasks and get paid for it. And that will allow you to put as your experience, a consultant, you can say you're a freelance software development consultant. Okay. And that looks a lot better than, uh, you know, if you, if you're working at Dunkin' Donuts or some other job. So make sure go to Upwork, register yourself as a freelancer, even if you don't have any gigs and you're not working on a particular project right now, 
that doesn't mean that you're not a software developer, okay? If you code every day, and if you're improving your skills, and you're a freelance consultant on this website, you should not undersell yourself, all right? If you're coding every day, guess what you are? You're a software engineer. So say it the way it is, but make sure you act upon it and master whatever it is that you are learning. There's another website, freelancer.com, I believe. And you can sign up your profile here and get gigs on this site as well, okay? The next thing is uh, make sure you give a lot of detail about the jobs that you've worked in. Now, I, I've been working for over a decade now, and uh, in the beginning, if I scroll to the bottom, uh, my earlier uh, positions, I've been on LinkedIn for a while, and I used to write all kinds of details about the, the position, what I accomplished, and uh, as you can see, as I progressed in my career, the list kind of got smaller and smaller, and then finally in JP Morgan, my last job, it looks like I did, it looks like I did nothing, but uh, of course I did a lot, I just didn't want to write that down because I wasn't looking for a job. Give as many details as possible, and the keywords should be, you know, for me, the keywords are Java, Spring, Elasticsearch, Python, Ruby, SQL. These are the keywords. You want these to be towards the top of your profile and uh, as well as, you know, in some of the job specifications. Moving on, if we scroll further down, this is the skills and endorsement section. Okay, so for those of you that are taking some of my courses, make sure that you've listed that skill here. You can just click on add new skill. And if you took a data structures and algorithms course, type that up, make sure that skill is available. And if you completed the course, you could share that certificate with me and uh, I'll uh, endorse that skill if, if, you're, if you've completed the course. And uh, all of the skills that you know that you're comfortable with, make sure you list them out here and uh, you know ask your colleagues, ask your classmates to endorse you on those skills uh, you feel comfortable with. And then after that, a few recommendations doesn't hurt. You can ask a colleague, a professor, uh, or a friend to write recommendations. You don't have to go overboard with this. Uh, you know, I've seen people with, uh, you know, 20 or 30 recommendations, and that's a little, you know, I, I would say no one has the time to review all of that. The key things are the positions that you've worked on, what have you done, as well as uh, the expertise that you market right in the right in the top of your profile. The last thing I'd like to add is make sure you connect with as many people as possible. Um, and I was doing this when I first started my career. At that time, obviously, LinkedIn was not available. But after a couple of years, I was still a junior. I signed up to LinkedIn when it first came out, and I started connecting with as many people as I could, especially recruiters. And the more people that I connected with, the higher my profile began to rank. And uh, so at this point on Google, if you search my name, my profile, my LinkedIn profile is towards the top. Obviously, I'm being ranked by Udemy as well because I'm a, a best-selling author. But it's nice to see that my LinkedIn profile is towards the top. And by the way, recruiters do this all the time. They are constantly Googling people's names to see if they can find uh, a picture of them clubbing last night or something like that on social network, uh, on social media. So it's very important for you to keep things professional and make sure you prioritize your appearance on LinkedIn. If you have something professional, something nice, something motivational, uh, something related to the career, add that to your LinkedIn profile. Share it with as many people as you can. The more people get to see your name, the higher you're going to start to rank. Okay, so just some basic practical advice on marketing yourself on LinkedIn. The key takeaway here is never undersell yourself, okay? If you're going to sell yourself, you might as well oversell yourself uh, and get that interview, get your foot in the door, and then on the job, overperform. Work the weekends, work the evenings, and, and make sure you succeed at that job. I can't tell you how many people that I've seen in the profession that have worked for 20 years uh, developing software professionally and are still not as capable as someone that has only two or three years of hard-earned experience just because they didn't write as many lines of code as the new kid on the block, okay? It's all about challenging yourself and writing lots and lots of code if you're a programmer. If you're in another profession, such as business analysis or a database developer or network engineer, whatever craft it is that you're working on, make sure you master that craft. And then sell yourself on LinkedIn, right? Don't be afraid to share with everyone how much you know. That's important. It's not about the years of experience someone has. It's about how much knowledge they have attained during a certain period of time and how much effort they put in. All right, so let's wrap it up here. 
If you like this video, make sure to share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video.